Hello beautiful friends, it's me again, it's Andrea. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to share with you some uh, journals I've made uh, as a guest design team uh, artist for Lorna Taylor of Taylor Made Journals. I've used two of her amazing kits. Um, I think you can see I had a hard time choosing <laughs> what I was gonna do with this particular kit. So the first one I used was a Winter's Magic Junk Journal Kit, and that's these three items here. And the last one that I have on this side is uh, the, her Tea Party Junk Journal Digital Kit. So I'm just gonna give you a bit of information about the kits before we start looking into them. Uh, the Winter's Magic uh, Journal Kit it comes with 32 pages, so lots and lots of things to work with. Um, it has a variety of envelopes, so there's coin envelopes, regular envelopes, tags, corner tucks, journaling cards, pockets, uh, tabs for the top of your tags, image, uh, image paper. I call them image paper, paper when there's just an image on it um, that you wouldn't likely um, write on. Um, and then journaling pages where there's space for you to write in between the beautiful imagery that she uses. Um, and that's the Winter's Magic. And for the Tea Party Junk Journal Digital Kit, there are 11 pages of amazing ephemera in those in that particular kit as well. So I've completely fallen in love. Um, so I'm going to take you through the pieces that I've made uh, with her digitals and uh, here we go. I'm going to start with the Winter's Magic so I'm just going to move Tea Party off to the side here um, and I'll start with the first one that I made. So I created these covers specifically for her kits for Lorna's kit, uh, specifically for the winter journal kit. Um, I absolutely fell in love and I thought, you know, I want to try something a little different. So there's a bit of um, acetate on the front window here. Uh, the fabric that I've used was just this gorgeous, gorgeous, um, it looks like eco dyed fabric. I found that at Lens Mills, which is a local, um, uh, they have an, a it's not necessarily just a fabric store. They have kind of all of the things, but they do carry a really beautiful selection of fabrics. So I, I end up driving down there quite often for interesting fabrics. And this was absolutely perfect. So the first image that I used was this gorgeous little squirrel and he's just peeking through, which I absolutely adore. And I'm gonna bring this up to the camera. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see. Um, I've used Stickles glitter. Um, in the uh, background here just to sort of add to the snow that's already in the image uh, so it looks a little bit more magical hopefully that came out uh, okay on camera I can't quite see from where I'm seated uh, and then I used one of her tags so this journal is called the wonders of winter and we'll open it up we'll just go right on inside I've used some cheesecloth and some other scrap fabrics uh, so inside here I'll move my bunnies off. There's this amazing elk in the front here. Um, corner pocket, this is part of the kit. This background paper is actually Tim Holtz, so this is not part of the kit, but I found that I thought it went very nicely together. So there's this beautiful elk image, this gorgeous little um, bird journaling card that I've just left blank on the back that's tucked in here. Um, and I've backed these all with a heavier cardstock this amazing fox I just love that's one of my favorite images and then here he is again in a little coin envelope just tucked in the front and this gorgeous elk what I've done to make the papers a little heavier is sewn them together so there's two pieces of um, Epson photo quality matte paper um, that I've sewn together so they have almost the same heft as a, as a scrapbook paper and it makes them double-sided so there's the elk on this side and then there's some beautiful writing paper the kit also comes with this really cool um, December calendar so I've just made that into a flip to add more journaling space here because you know I really like to make sure you have lots of space to write in and that's just um, attached with this beautiful washi tape tea stained papers my usual tea stained papers this was a little scrap left from the cover of one of the other uh, images that I've, I've used. Oh, here's my cat. He's coming to say hello. Sorry, he jiggled the camera there. Um, some more writing paper here with a beautiful little, um, looks like a chickadee. And, and here some uh, winter mountains and a crow with beautiful snowflakes. 
tea stain paper, some more tea stain paper. I've just sewn on uh, a piece, a half piece of one of the pages here just for some interest. Hello, Mr. Beam. How are you? Can you leave the cord alone, please? Thank you. And here, oh, I love this image here. I'm going to bring it above the cat so you can see. And he's going to lie down right there. I know it. There's a beautiful owl and a, a lovely little, looks like a sparrow type bird. We don't have these birds that I know of in Canada, uh, but lovely little bird anyways. Maybe we do. I'm going to have to do some research. More tea stained paper. Uh, just a little flap of fabric from the cover. Just, I just like to throw that in because it's such a pretty piece of fabric. You can use that in the journal if you wanted to or just add it as an extra hiding spot. You could probably even, if you were super crafty, stitch some paper to the back of this. You know, just unstaple it, stitch some paper to the back of it and have it as a journaling spot as well. That would be kind of cool. I might do that in my next journal. This gorgeous deer looking off to the side. Here's one of the pockets, of course. Well, this is a journaling card that I've made into a pocket and I had to reuse the squirrel image in this one. And there's this beautiful owl on the envelope here. Just a lovely, lovely image and another nice tag with bright red berries. I really love that contrast of the gray and the blue and the red. She put this kit together so beautifully. I'm a big fan. More writing space here with another sweet little birdie. This is the center image. I absolutely adore this. He's one of my favorites. So regal. A little pocket with the fox. And I just attached it to this piece of paper here. It almost looks like they go together. They weren't intended, I don't think, to be together. But when I put this pocket on this page, it just blended in so perfectly. And then I created uh, using um, two long tags rather than cutting them. I've made them, I've just folded them and made them into a long little booklet. And I just used plain white paper and I've used silver stickle on, on the edge of them just to give it more of a wintry look. So there's lots of little pages in there. You could use that to keep track of your Christmas lists um, or items you got for Christmas um, or whatever you want the pages. There's another beautiful image. Lots of writing space. There's that fox again in the woods and that lovely little bird. This is just regular, yep, tea stained paper. Some mountains and crows or ravens. That sweet little bird again. I love this image as well. A little fox pouncing. And there's some lined uh, space here for writing. There's that, another lovely little bird with red berries. Here's sweet little bunnies at the bottom, which uh, you'll see I've used in one of the covers. Uh, some nice, uh, you could write on this page, you could add photographs. And again, here's a journal for, or a journal, a calendar for January. Um, and I've just made it a flip up. So the first one is a flip out and this one is a flip up. So again, giving you more space to write or leave pictures. And again, that's just attached with washi tape. I've glued the washi tape, so it's, um, it, it is kind of permanent. This one you wouldn't be able to move without tearing the page. Um, I like to add a little bit of glue to the washi because it's not really intended to stay forever. It's a little bit more almost like a masking tape, but it's just so pretty. Oh, I love this too, the crow or the raven. I guess he's a raven if I look at him properly. He's got the feathers coming down on his beak and a little curve. I hope I'm right. Someone tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what makes him a raven. Love this as well. Beautiful um, snow sort of crystals, almost uh, like they appear on your, I hate to say it, on your windshield in winter um, or on the glass of your windows. So pretty. Another little pocket here. So you can see there's lots of pockets, lots of journaling cards in this kit. And I actually managed to use this kit um, in two, I, one kit made two of these journals with just a few overlaps. So there's a little envelope and I've added another little journaling card. So it looks like, um, actually I'll bring it a little closer. Hopefully the lighting is okay. It's uh, like a library card. And again, that's just um, white cardstock on the back. There's always something that has to argue with me. And that just tucks in. Oh, I'm making a mess. 
into that sweet little pocket. Now with this pocket, or all of the pockets that I've used, I've also backed them onto cardstock. So when you fold the flaps over, they kind of sit off the page a little bit, giving them a bit more room to add, uh, add things in and out more easily. Um, usually I don't do that, but this one, I, I think I will start doing that now because I found it very helpful to get things in and out with ease. More writing space. Another beautiful writing page, part of the kit, and that beautiful stag. The imagery is just so gorgeous. There's those beautiful red berries. I like the idea of writing a little story or writing about your day, journaling all the way, like kind of curving it around into the image, making it the story part of your image. I, I like that. I think that's really cool. And, oh, there's the center image of the second signature. So the stag and some beautiful trees and mountains on this side. And this is really cool. This beautiful woman and her dress kind of folds into the mountains. So it's almost like she's stepping out of the mountains like a winter goddess. And that's the other side. Lots of writing space again. Another beautiful stag. There's a fox, another stag here and some birds in the background, some snowflakes and some icy looking imagery and writing space there. There's the other side of that crystally snowflake paper. There's another crow or raven here and uh, another journaling card that I've turned into a corner tuck with some beautiful tags. And the journaling card with this cute little bunny Got a little mark on it there. There we go. And this other beautiful tag with the red berries that I've just tucked in there. And then that jumping fox a little bit larger this time. This is just an image on the page. It's not a pocket. It's just a, a lovely way to use that extra piece that I had. And on the back of the signature here, the last page is a postcard with again that image of the woman stepping out of the mountains and a lovely little fox. Um, oops, I throw it away. Another little postcard here, plain on the back. And again, another journal, uh, mini journal or notebook I get, that I've torn the edges and, and put the silver stickles on. And that's the back image. So there's that squirrel again and the bunny and the owl in the front. And turning the page over, of course, I had to finish it with the squirrel since he is the, the star of this particular journal. Uh, there's another pocket. Again, you can kind of see how it's lifted up just a bit because that it's it's uh, backed on the cardstock. It's not thick cardstock. It's quite thin, actually. I wish I don't know the weight. I'm sorry, but it's got a good heft to it. And this lovely mason jar with berries in it. I put all the berries in the back. A nice journaling tag that could easily be a bookmark and then the envelope that goes with. And I've taken one of the circles uh, from the kit and of the stag and made that the little holder or closure for the envelope. This is a nice big envelope. And again, the uh, Tim Holtz paper on the back there. And there's the back of that one. I get, so two signatures. This one has about, let's see, my cat dropped my book. Um, it has about, I want to say, hmm, let me see. I'll tell you for sure. Uh, 84 pages in it. So could quite easily be used as a December daily, um, probably even going a bit into January. Um, or you could use it for, you know, two Christmases in a row, winter journal, whatever you like. But I really love this kit so much. So this one is called The Wonders of Winter with our little squirrel friend on the cover. So I'll go to the next one. I'm sure you can see why I had such a hard time choosing a cover image that I ended up making three journals. Sorry, I hit the cord and I'm shaking the camera. I'm so, so sorry. I'll let it settle. I hope nobody gets seasick. So here's the next one with the sweet little bunnies in the corner. I just adore that image. And again, I've used stickles where all of the snowflakes um, or the little snow drops are in the actual image, just to sort of give it a bit more dimension. This one is called A Walk in the Forest. And again, I've used some fabric backing of uh, scraps, some cheesecloth. 
this came with the journal kit and that's just a little doily from a tablecloth. Two signatures again, same fabric as the previous one. It looks like the eco dyed paper. Uh, this one has, I think, uh, 72 pages in it. All of the journals that I'm showing you today measure uh, eight and three quarters by six by two and a half. Okay, so let's get right on into this one. So for the inside of this journal, I've used uh, another piece of, well, let's take a look here. This, uh, I shared the same kit between these two journals. So between the squirrel and the rabbits, they have a shared kit between them with a few extra image pages that I had to print off. But you can see how far one journal kit can stretch. It's really quite lovely. Um, so here is a file folder, had to think about that, a mini file folder that comes with the kit. Um, of course, I, I used the whole thing and then ended up gluing it onto the onto the paper so you don't get to see the back, but it's very similar to the front. And then there's this beautiful, of course, I love that fox image, oval um, with some cheesecloth behind it for texture. I glued it on um, onto the front cover here. Um, it's sewn for structure. Um, and so it's open here and it's open at the back as well. And this is just some scrapbooking paper. I honestly picked it up at the dollar store. It, they seem to be selling really beautiful scrapbooking paper lately. So again, you can see that um, it's open at the back and it's open at the front so you can store lots of things in it. Cute little bird postcard. Again, all of them are just blank white cardstock on the back. There's this extra little tab um, you could use for a date if you wanted to, you know, write, you know, maybe this you're using this for two Christmases as a December daily. Um, I can't remember what year it is, 2021 and 2022, or date it as you use the journal. There's that gorgeous frosty snowflakey image as a postcard. There, beautiful mountain tag. There's that gorgeous elk on the tag, on a nice long, tall tag. And here's the first opening image. I like the, the deer and the fox sort of looking at each other. In this book, I used white paper, so very similar to the previous book, the little journals that I showed you, where I tore the page edges and used the silver stickles. I've done that throughout the whole journal for this one. So this is a sparkly one, guys writing paper. There's that same idea, the December calendar with the flip up on the paper. Uh, I've used a little square. It almost is like a stamp. Um, it looks like a little postage stamp. And had I had my um, wavy scissors, I might have cut that out as a postage stamp. So that's an idea if you decide to get the kit. Uh, just so this beautiful elk again. And of course, the bunnies have to make a starring role throughout this journal. Such a sweet little image. And I've done the same thing here with this one. I've sewn the two pages together to give it a little bit more texture and heft. Great places for writing here or adding pictures. You can see there are the pages with the shiny sparkly stickles. Writing space here with the fox, the jumping fox. Here's a, this was a journaling card that I've turned into a pocket with the owl. And as previous, I think we saw this library card in the other journal in one of the envelopes that's just tucked in here and this is almost a matching image to this one here and moving along two pages the only downside with the stickles and the torn edges is sometimes the pages want to stick together just a little bit but if you can tolerate that for the pretty sparkliness I think we're okay beautiful red berries again there's, I used that center image again. It's just perfect for the middle of a signature just to open it up and it almost gives you that like, <gasps> wow, factor. Writing space on the other side. And again, there's two little pages that I've stuck together. There, more lined paper, more white paper. Now here, um, in the previous journal, I had sewn these or glued and sewn these to the page today or for today. For this one, I just decided to make it a flip up again. So you have lots more space for anything you want. I'm all about giving you space. My sewing machine had a little bit of a hissy fit the day I was sewing these. There's our little friend squirrel. It's 
some more beautiful writing pages. So there's the stag here and the elk. I love this. Oh, it's so pretty. And the way this sort of ice or almost like Aurora Borealis, these lines come out from behind him, just give him more of a regal look. So pretty. Lorna, you rock. Great little pocket here. Um, this could have been easily a journaling card. Journaling card. My, my English isn't so great today. I say that a lot. It's because I film at night. And here's another little tab. Now these are two pieces that I've glued together. So you could easily use that as a label if you wanted to cover that and make it 2020. I like the vintageness of that. Here's another one of those little uh, look could quite easily be a postage stamp, a tiny little tuck spot. Um, you could use it um, as I did with the circles on the back, the circle closures on the back of an envelope. Sorry, my, pardon my reach here. So instead of using the round circles, I could have easily just used the square tab as a little hidey spot for the envelope to tuck under. Gorgeous Raven. And here's another one of the file folders. So this one I've left um, free, so you can do whatever you want with it. And lots of you can tuck photos or receipts into that. And I just like the two, the two stags together. There, extra little bits. And again, here's the flip up for January. It's just such a beautiful image. I have to stop getting lost in this, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to show you everything. And another little stamp type square with a beautiful blue bird on it and another flip up here. So this is the fox. This almost looks like a complete page. Um, they weren't intended to be a complete page, but they just look so great together. So this one flips up and again attached with washi tape and there's that gorgeous raven and writing space on the back. More writing space there. Here's another one of the, oops, I better be gentle here of the berry envelope. Sorry, I'm gonna try and settle myself down. I seem to be flipping things pretty quickly. And there. And on the inside, I've added just a little journaling spot. So you can use this uh, to mount a photo on if you want. I've left that free for you to do or as a journaling card. And there is just a little um, double tag, double journal card, I'm sorry. there and here again is that beautiful crystally snowflake great little pocket here that has coin envelope got lots of room in there great place to keep tags if you get any clothing for Christmas or anything like that another beautiful journaling tag and this gorgeous owl journaling tag Excuse me. Fiddle fingers today. And there's the center image that I've used for the second signature with the owl and the fox. More writing paper. There's the forest. So pretty. I love the bluey gray color you've used Lorna. It's so, so beautiful. More berries. There's the raven with the berries. Getting to the end here. So same pocket uh, that I used on the back of the previous journal, the owl and the little bluebird. Little orange bird. There's the other little mason jar and the squirrel tag. These all came from, again, as part of the previous kit. So the only thing that I printed doubles of uh, were um, some of the journaling pages, uh, like pages like this, that was really it. So this, uh, sorry, this one here, this one I printed a double of, um, this one I printed a double of, this one I printed a double of, um, but pretty much everything else is from the original kit. So that's my little, Bunny's journal, Walk a Walk in the Forest. Now the next one I'm gonna show you isn't actually a complete journal. I haven't had a chance to finish it, but this is the cover. Um, so I just couldn't decide. The, I couldn't find the same fabric that I had, uh, the, the sort of eco-dyed looking fabric. So uh, my mom found this one for me 
and it's quite beautiful. It almost looks like a combination of the winter branches, but it also kind of mimics the stag's uh, antlers here. So I really liked how they kind of went together. It's a little more um, greeny blue than the previous one, which is a, more of a, a true blue. Uh, but I really like this one. So this one will be, when it's finished, called Winter's Magic. Um, and again, I've used stickles and there's the acetate window on the top and journaling or um, scrapbook paper on the inside. Oh, there's Mr. Bean again. So those are the three journals that I have and or will be making with, pardon his tale, I apologize, with uh, Lorna Taylor's Winter's Magic. There's the bunnies. There's the squirrel. And there's the stag that will soon be a complete book. And then on to this a total shift in mood, bright, bright color. Sorry, that was Captain hitting the, the cord again. Um, so here's the tea kit. This is the, uh, the Tea Party Junk Journal Digital Kit. Again, this has 11 pages in it. This fabric, uh, I think, is by an artist called Tula Pink. I like her stuff. Anyone who's a quilter will probably know her very well. And I've just added a little strip of fabric because uh, it was directional didn't think about that. So those of you who are sewers, you will probably be giggling at me. I'm a sewer too. I should have known better, but the fabric was directional this way and I didn't have enough width to cover the whole journal. So I had to put a piece here and put a piece here, but the effect is still the same. So the cover in the window, I've used a really cute piece of pink scrapbooking fabric and a teacup and a teapot pouring into the tea or into the teacup. I really liked that. Now this, I kind of had created with it being a, a recipe book in mind or a place to store your favorite recipes or if you find, um, you know, great little recipes in magazines, just staple them in or glue them in or you can write them as well. Um, so on the inside cover, so the scrapbooking paper that you see here and here, this is from a kit, uh, like from a scrapbook um, pad, the words are gone again. Um, but all of the imagery, the tags, everything is from Lorna Taylor. So there's a sweet little tea advertisement and a cigarette card for Time Leaved Tea Tree. I love this one. Kitty's Tea. Cute little. It's funny because the image of the dog stands out most, but there's two little cats on the side here you can see, hopefully. And then I just took one, shrunk down one of the images of all of the tea cakes and just added it to a regular shipping tag that's been tea dyed. And then this sweet little image, she almost became the cover. My mom and I were trying to decide which one to be the cover. Uh, it's a little girl having a tea party with her dolly and her bunny. And it almost looks like an old Singer sewing table, just a little bit. So that's the front opening cover. Um, flowers I thought were really nice because of course you can have floral and herbal teas so I thought that went kind of nicely with the kit. Here is a small, um, I guess it's a little ticket from a tea, a tea company and I've just taped, uh, washi taped that on as a little flip up there. Blank on the inside. Here's two of the little, uh, of the tea advertisements that I've just glued together as a flip. So there's Old Maid's, the Old Maid's Tea Party. Music, uh, a musical pleasantry for the piano. So I guess it's the cover of um, a music book. Isn't that fun? And then Oduli's first five o'clock tea on some ledger paper. Of course I had to use tea stained paper in this one and I found some fun trims that I thought kind of went with the joyous front cover and the bright colors. This one's a little more true to a junk journal style in the sense that I've used a variety of different papers. Here is one of the images from the kit that I've just put on um, scrapbook paper. It's the same scrapbook paper that I used on, excuse me, uh, the background for the cover. And I've just added a little bit of this beautiful teal braiding to bring in some of the colors of her dress and the teacups together and some of the color in the carpet. And that just flips open. Hopefully I'm on camera so you can tape a recipe there and then turning the page. This is just um, an altered paper clip that I've made so you can add recipes to hide underneath that and that comes with the kit as well. 
This is scrapbooking paper um, from a, a scrapbooking book, but this beautiful teacup comes as part of the digital kit and there's some fun little tags. So there's a package, a, an advertisement for packaged teas and another little uh, image of two little children. This would have been an advertisement as well, two little children having a tea party. And that's just a, a blank piece of paper that I've tucked behind. I've used this image. It's on cardstock and it's a little tuck spot there. And here, nice pocket so you can add favorite recipes, magazine pages, pictures that you find pretty. There's lots of room to store things there. Some nice little pink trim. There's the center of the signature. Here's another altered paper clip again. It's got all those lovely little tea cakes. Oh, this is just making me want to go to a tea party now. I hope I did that on camera. <laughs> I find that I sometimes hold the image so I can see it and I forget you're there. So I'm sorry if I do that. Some great teal trim. And there's the other side of that double of that pocket here. And if you wanted to, if you wanted even more pocket space, you could take a piece of cardstock or another one of the images, you know, like taking something like that, for example, or Kitty's Tea and make another little tuck spot to hide more recipes in here. That would be a great idea. Lots of ways to use this book. Here's uh, the tea, same teacup that's on the cover, but what I've done is I've put it on cardstock, glued it to the page, but I've just added a little slice in here to make it a great little tuck spot for small little tags. Honestly, I don't know what you would use this tag for in a recipe book at all. It was just adorable and charming. And then I've cut, fussy cut images from um, one of the other images. I'll, it's somewhere in the book here. Um, so I just cut it the plate and the cup and put them on the tag just to give it a little something extra. It almost looks like a little tea bag hanging out of the teacup. I like that. here tea cakes and I've made this into a pocket oh here's the image there you can see so I cut out the plate and the teacup to oh, where we go Boop. so there's a smaller image of that I know I shouldn't fuss around with trying to get things in pockets uh, these are all backed on tea stained paper which is appropriate for a tea themed book I think lovely little girl carrying a tea set. It looks like she's precariously coming down the stairs with everything. And here is uh, Polly put the kettle on, the little nursery rhyme Polly put the kettle on with the imagery, probably from a children's book. Ah, yes, and I have made this also into a double pocket. So this, um, I've just taken some cardstock and folded it in half. So it's got room behind and room in the front as well. So I wanted to give you lots of places to tuck in recipes that you already have. Um, again, you don't have to use this for recipes. That was just my idea when I was making it. Maybe you want to use photographs. I love a good tea party. I'm all about tiny dishes and tea and tea cakes. I love that, which makes sense. As most of you know, Alice in Wonderland is my favorite story. So <laughs> it makes sense that I would love tea as well. Five o'clock tea advertisement, a little girl and two little girls here having tea together and that's just a flip up. Tea table shot, or sha, the cat. And some uh, tea images here, beautiful vintage um, tea sets. And those are just on, on regular paper and I've taken that tea leaf. This is one that I used for the altered paper clip earlier and this is just backed onto um, scrapbooking paper. Blank on the inside. One of the images again from the kit that I've just glued directly onto the paper. So this isn't anything like a, it's not a pocket or anything. It's just an image for brightness and color. I've done an envelope flip here with another image from the kit. Got this little spot there. And uh, this is, uh, I think this is more of a, a, it says cocoa or chocolate. So this is a bit more of a, a hot chocolate advertisement, but I think it goes perfectly with tea because yum, who wouldn't want a cup of hot chocolate? It's quite chilly here today. It's actually Halloween, Hallow's Eve. It's um, the 31st of October. Uh, so it's a bit chilly out at the moment. 
So I've made this into a flip here. So again, writing space, lots of writing space, tuck spots in here. So you can, again, if you find a recipe that you love from a magazine, fold it up, tuck it in here so you can always find it. More writing space here. It's just been glued to the page. Cute little pocket with images from the kit again. Me and my tea cakes. I can't get enough of this particular image. I printed the um, the kit in small and large, so I, I printed it down two to a page and then full page as well, so that's why you might see multiples of the same image. I initially didn't do it on purpose, but it worked out well. Got a new printer, so I'm just learning how to use it again. Here's another little, yeah, little, I keep saying little, I apologize. Another image from the kit that I've added, uh, put onto cardstock and then made into a tuck spot. And there's a, another um, cigarette card with tea, advertising tea, beautiful Japanese tea image, and another one of those gorgeous antique tea set images as well. This one is backed onto um, tea stained cardstock. The others are not. And turning the page, there's again in this signature, Another giant tuck page so that you can add more recipes to, more pity fours. Here, I've just made out of, these are two journaling cards. Um, so I've left them whole. Uh, it, they come as such in the kit and then you would just cut them to have two separate journaling cards. I like to use these as little notebooks. So you can see I've tied it as a mini journal and uh, tea stain paper on the inside. I've used uh, recipe cards to create the pages. Uh, there's a tea stain paper with one of the images from the kit, another recipe card, and then on the other side, recipe card, tea stained paper with an image from the kit, recipe card, and then there's another ticket that you could you know, write a little recipe or notes. Maybe if you have recipes in here that you love, but you need to modify a little bit, you know, a little less sugar here, a little more chocolate there, then you can make those extra notes. And giant paper clip. There we go. Don't have the images there. There are so many images in this kit, I couldn't get them all in this book and still give you writing space. There's just so many of them. Here's another altered paper clip. This is one of my favorite images of a little girl having a tea party with her teddy bear. I just love that because as a child, of course, I used to have tea parties with my teddy bears. There's that extra tuck spot. Here's another image from the kit that I've again put on um, scrapbook paper and I've just trimmed with this beautiful white trim. I thought that went really nicely and that flips out. Uh, sorry, my cat just startled me. That flips out so that you could put another recipe or a photograph of something that works. Another altered paper clip using an image from the kit. This is a smaller version of the image and that's just on tea stained paper and cardstock to give it a nice structure. And here's the back of the final signature. So I've taken a couple things together. Uh, this is uh, obviously a teacup that was an individual image. This was cut out from um, from a tag, the, uh, the little teapot here that I just glued onto the front. This was a journaling card. Um, rather than using it as a journaling card, I fussy cut out all of the tea leaves here and made them uh, sort of hide behind the teacup. And then almost as a a nod to the front cover, I took the teapot and it's watering the tea plant. Back image, another little uh, teacup tuck spot, and these are just two little plain tags there. And here's the back cover. Sweet anticipations with an uh, with image of three children and they're looking at this gorgeous cake waiting for tea. There's a nice little tag with the tea set on it. Another advertisement, another tea advertisement, BT Babbitt's New York 1776, little girl with her kitty cat having a cup of tea. And here's another one of those um, antique uh, images 
And again, that's just on regular white paper. So they all tuck in there and that's the back. So that's the back image of that beautiful fabric. Excellent. So there we go. This is my, my, my many <laughs> journals. Uh, for Lorna Taylor of TaylorMade Journal's design team, guest design team. Uh, so I'm really thrilled to have been able to work with her pieces, with her, her two kits. Um, I have absolutely fell in love with them. Um, you can see how inspired I was just by the winter kit and of course being close to winter. Um, I'm extra inspired living in Canada. Winter is a fabulous, it's such a beautiful, beautiful season. So anyways, thank you very much, Lorna, for allowing me to be a guest artist. And I really loved, loved working with your kits. Uh, I'm just going to tell you again quickly the names of the kits. I'll also link them below so that you can find them on Etsy. Uh, so again, it's Lorna Taylor. Her business name is Taylor Made Journals. You can find her on Etsy. These three journals are made using Winter's Magic Junk Journal Kit. That one has 32 pages in it, and you can see how much you can get done with it. And this one is her Tea Party Junk Journal Digital Kit. This has 11 pages of ephemera and things for you to create your own beautiful journals. Hopefully you found some inspiration. I hope that you are inspired to go and purchase her kits, uh, create things for friends. These, uh, some of these will be up in my Etsy shop in the next day or two. Some of them will be gifts for people. So um, just keep your eyes open and uh, you can find my, my link to my Etsy shop uh, in the, my link tree yeah, in, in below. Anyways, thank you so much, my friends, for coming. I appreciate all of your support. Have an amazing day. Bye now.